you start your recording now. Okay. All, all, all right. So um, welcome everybody to this uh, first session of this today. I'm Yuji. I'm chairing this session. So without further ado, uh, let me introduce the first speaker here, um, who is Roberto um, Ruboli, who is uh, going to talk about uh, the additivity of the real entropy of entanglement and generalization. So Roberto, please. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, so this is a joint work with Marco Toma Michel at CQT in Singapore. And yes, exactly. I will talk about additivity properties of relative of entropy of entanglement and sun generalizations. So first I will introduce what are entanglement monotons and, and the additivity question. Um, then I will state some additivity properties of the relative entropy of entanglement and I will identify two classes and I will generalize it to some um, um, more general quantities, and uh, these are called alpha z Reni relative entropy of entanglement, and I will still state some additivity properties of them, and um, I will uh, mention some application of, of the results to catalytic transformation, and in the end, um, I will talk about uh, the non-additivity. Uh, in this case, uh, more general settings, so entanglement monotons based on uh, any quantum relative entropy. Anyway, um, so what are entanglement monotons? First, I define separable states. So uh, we have um, we assume n parties, and a separable state is um, a convex mixture with probability distribution. Uh, I call it PI uh, of tensor products of local states. So we have uh, n tensor products of local states, and otherwise, if this state is not separable, I will call it entangled. So what is an entanglement monoton? Uh, an entanglement monoton is something that uh, somehow quantifies uh, the entanglement content of a state. So it's a function, I call it R, from the set of states to positive values. And uh, like, uh, the higher is the value, basically, uh, the higher is the entanglement. And um, one, one property that um, basic properties that it is required is that it doesn't increase under any local operation and classical communication, which I uh, we call LOCC and standard way. And uh, yeah, under this LOCC, you basically you cannot care, um, create entanglement. So um, the value of the monotons must decrease. And some examples are relative entropy of entanglement, generalized robustness, uh, but but of entanglement, but there are many out of there and many have been studying and as you understand i will mainly focus on relative entropy of entanglement and uh so uh, let's start with the additivity question so i have my monoton r and two states row one and row two both of them are entangled but they are in tensor product so there are no correlations between them and i am i'm asking uh is uh the monoton evaluated on the tensor product of the states equal to the monotone evaluated on the first state plus the monotone evaluated on the second state. Um, and this would mean basically, um, is the entanglement uh, motivated, the entanglement defined by this resource monotone, so motivated by this resource monotone uh, of the whole system, uh, row one and row two, um, just the sum of the entanglement of, of the two systems is, uh, um, or there's something else. And so is uh, um, one question is, is our additive for any states row one and row two? And I mentioned that um, this is um, not true for many monotones. And these uh, are some old, uh, these were already known for the relative entropy of entanglement, for example, for uh, 20 years ago. And uh, for other monotones, like the, the generalized robustness. Uh, and maybe this is not uh, the most interesting question. Anyway, I will address it later. Uh, but um, what I'm only interested about is what are the minimum requirements on the states row one and row two uh, to ensure additivity. And also in this way, there are some results, but I will be interested in, in um, uh, so uh, the results that are out of there are partial uh, or they uh, require both constraints on row one and row two. And what I, I will look for is um, when we just constrain the first state and can we still have additivity? So, um, like the theoretical question, which are the minimum requirement uh, for uh, additivity? And um, actually, we find that I just need to impose some constraints on the state on the first state. Actually, uh, so okay, let's go through the results. So first, uh, the additive, um, the relative entropy of entanglement. So I just, uh, I guess, uh, now any of you is familiar. I just define the relative entropy with trace rho log rho minus log sigma when uh, the support of rho is smaller than the support of sigma, otherwise it's infinite or 
basically not defined. And the relative entropy of entanglement is just, uh, you just minimize over the set of separable states, uh, the, the relative entropy. And so first, the first result, so um, we introduce what are maximally correlated states. So maximally correlated states are bipartite states of this form, sum of JK, rho JK, J, J, K, K. And um, so you can think of them as a generalization of bipartite pure states. Uh, you just write your state in the Smith composition, you build the density matrix, and uh, a bipartite pure state, uh, you can see that is just a generalization of maximally correlated states. And the first result we have is that um, only when the first state is maximally correlated, then for any state for two, whatever its nature is, um, the, the relative entropy of entanglement is going to be additive. So uh, the relative entropy of entanglement for one test row two is equal to uh, D row one plus D row two. Uh, the, second, the second result we have um, cons uh, is a bit more complicated. So uh, here we have n partite states. And uh, so we have some condition on, on the optimizer of uh, the relative entropy of entanglement. So if tau one is uh, an optimizer that, uh, in particular, if commutes with the input state and the product with uh, the, uh, the the inverse of the optimizer multiplied by, uh, in, the, in the decimal matrix sense, um, with the input state is non-negative. So non-negative, I mean, uh, it has positive entries. So uh, in, in the product basis. So you look at your matrix in the product basis, and then uh, you can find uh, a basis such that it has positive entries. Then for any uh, n-partite state row two, we have that uh, the relative entropy of entanglement is additive. And this class includes uh, separable states. So uh, basically tensoring any state with uh, any separable state, it doesn't increase the relative entropy of entanglement. Uh, Bell diagonal states, uh, generalized decade states and isotropic states, and probably many other, but um, uh, this one were kind of some states were considered in the literature. Uh, so I just mentioned them. Uh, so actually I wasn't, um, our research was motivated by not really the re relative entropy of entanglement, but uh, to look at some other monotons. And um, so uh, I'm asking, um, what are the additivity properties of the other monotons? Uh, but before doing that, I will, uh, I will uh, explain the main idea. So the main idea is to use the condition of local minimum. So I call it tau, the um, optimizer in the minimum. And uh, I take the derivative sigma uh, in, in this case, would be uh, a, a fresh derivative. So, um, in a, the derivative along the direction sigma in a density matrix sense. And here we have an expression for uh, the condition of the minimum. So, since um, the relative entropy is convex in the second argument, we have a condition, an if and only if condition um, for, for, for an optimizer. So, if uh, the condition would be if uh, this trace function of a uh, sigma, where sigma is any separable state with a positive operator that I call chi uh, of rho tau in tau is smaller than one for any separable states, then we know that tau is an optimizer. And the idea is to show this, is to show that um, for the tensor product rho one and, and rho two, the, the optimizer is the tensor product of, of the optimizer of the marginal problems. So we have the constraints by assumption on both uh, row one and row two and their optimizer. And then we add up far, far the constraints on row one and tau one, for example, for uh, maximally correlated states or, or, or for the other class, I, I added other constraints because otherwise it wouldn't be an actually additive. So you need other constraints. And in this way, I'm not going into the details, but you can show uh, that uh, it is additive uh, for the classes I mentioned above. So now generalizations. Um, so uh, first I introduce the alpha Z Rennie relative entropy. And this one uh, provides a framework to address different families of Rennie divergences. So uh, let the definition is uh, let alpha between uh, zero and infinity uh, one 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 we we just define it in one with the limit, and that is strictly positive. Uh, then uh, we define it uh, in the way you see it in formula eleven. Um, is yeah, it's just uh, it, it, you can think of of it as generalization of the relative entropy, uh, but includes more families. Uh, I will I will talk about it later. 
And uh, we, we also introduced the relate, related monotone just uh, in, with, with the same idea. So minimizing over the set of separable states. Uh, yeah, this basically ensures that when, when, whenever the underlying divergence satisfies the data processing inequality, then the, the, the minimized quantity yeah, is going to be a monotone. Uh, this is just a straightforward idea. And uh, so here is um, a picture. Uh, is the alpha z plane to to show a bit uh, which quantities I I can I can get with relative the alpha z relative entropy. So the the line alpha equal to z we get the sandwich um, relative entropy. Uh, if I guess many of you are familiar, uh, for z equal to one we, you will get the pet one, and then you have some points. So the infinity point would be the d max. Uh, the one half one half point would be um, minus log fidelity, the alpha equal to one point excluded z uh, equal to zero is going to be the omega key relative entropy, and the mean entropy would be alpha equal to zero and z equal to one. Uh, but yeah, uh, so uh, now I, I will discuss some well-known points. So uh, as you can, can get, whenever we have the omega key relative entropy, then the minimized quantity is going to be the relative entropy of entanglement. So alpha equal to one, z, excluded, uh, z equal to zero excluded. Uh, we have the relative entropy of entanglement, in the point at infinity, we have the generalized robustness, which is also um, a, a just a, a quite well-known quantity. And this one quantifies how much mixing can take place before you get your state, like your Fiona Van Tangle state, uh, can, can, how much mixing can take place before you get separable, basically. And then alpha equal to Z equal to half, uh, we have the geometric measure of entanglement. And this one for pure states is just defined as the fidelity, maximum fidelity. So the maximum superposition with pure product states in this case, because the state is pure products, pure product states, are, I mean, uh, the extreme points of the set of separable states. And uh, for, for mixed states, we have the convex um, roof construction, but uh, actually with, with some further work, you can show that the, the one half, one half point is going to be minus log one minus uh, the geometric measure of entanglement which is minus log fidelity uh, fs of rho which i called uh, which is uh, the fidelity of separability so in terms of fidelity is the maximum distance between your state and the set of separable states okay uh, so also here we can show in the same way that uh, for maximally correlated states regardless the nature of the state rho 2 uh, this is going to be additive and uh, the same is happening um, with the same constraints uh, on the first state. So, uh, so the, also the second results we had for the relative entropy with entanglement generalizes for this alpha d. And what I can say is that um, our approach was quite general. Okay, so I, I will go through it now, through it now. But okay, for the alpha d relative entropy, we can still get some condition of minimum. Uh, these were not known. Uh, the, the relative entropy uh, was known before, but it, it was not used for to to, to study additivity problems. Uh, but these ones, uh, yeah, it's a bit more general. And this one, this condition were not known. They are a bit complicated, but uh, you can still manage to to get through them and show that uh, the 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 optimizer of uh, row one tensor to row two still factorizes. Um, as the, the tensor product of the optimizer of the marginal problems. And, uh, and you can see how where this is going through is um, we can actually see that we can replace the set of um, separable states with the set of free states. And we can actually study additivity problems in end resource theories. And, and this is what we are starting to do. And um, we also have, uh, we can prove that also, for example, in resource theory of coherence for the one that you are more familiar, um, these quantities are going to be additive for any states, but um, this this resource for coherence was kind of already known. Uh, but uh, yeah, we can still recover it. Um, so one thing that maybe I want to mention is that um, this approach is quite general, and we could do it also for the monotone based uh, based on um, the geometric Rennie divergence, but uh, we couldn't uh, have a strategy that. Uh, could could find these results for any quantum relative entropy. Um, yeah, and this is something that we are still thinking on. Uh, okay. So, um, okay, uh, why 
why um, I'm interest, am I interested in this result? One, one motivation might be, okay, uh, what are the fundamental limits? So uh, uh, in, um, in catalytic transformations, um, so this is an application and uh, yeah, you okay. So uh, here an example. So whenever, whenever we have uh, two states, uh, uh, psi and psi prime, both of them pure, bipartite pure, and uh, we want to transform them. Uh, maybe it's not possible to transform them uh, with a low CC uh, just in the one shot setting, but adding a catalyst with a colid nu and uh, acting uh, on the whole system uh, plus catalyst uh, with a map and asking for the catalyst to be um, unchanged at the end of the transformation could allow actually the transformation from psi to psi prime. This phenomenon is called catalysis. And here, uh, there is some interest in understanding uh, the power of mixed catalysis. And this additivity question uh, can provide some set of necessary condition. So in the first line, I have my monotone evaluated on psi plus the monotone evaluated on the catalyst nu. And here I have additivity, so I can just, uh, is equal to the, to the monotone evaluated on tensor product, and then I can use just uh, data processing inequality, so um, basically monotonicity under low CC, which is why it is a monotone. And, um, and then I use additivity again. And in this way, I can simplify the catalyst. And then I can get this uh, all, all, quest, uh, all constraints on the set. Uh, I call it D, um, is the set. If you remember the picture before of the alpha Z Renly relative entropy, is the set where it satisfied it, uh, it where it was blue, right? So um, is the set where it satisfied the data processing inequality. So uh, the monotone related is is gonna be actually a monotone. Uh, so it's not increasing under low CC. Um, so uh, yes. So here you have a whole set of constraints, and actually for bipartite Q states, we also have a nice expression of the the, the alpha Z evaluated on Pew states, and you have this. Uh, and it is equal aqua to uh, to h bit of p. H bit of p uh, is the Rennie, uh, um, yeah, the the Rennie quantity. So you know, um, yes. Uh, and we have this um, natural, the classical Rennie entropy of the of of, of of some classical coefficients, and uh, we have this nice duality relationship one minus alpha over Z plus one over beta equal to one. And yeah, it's quite nice. And uh, another another point is that we were studying the catalytic setting. And in this case, um, not really the relative entropy of entanglement was uh, was crucial, but um, the, um, what, what, uh, the alpha equal to Z between one alpha and one, what, uh, what is called the sandwich any relative entropy, one excluded. And one was excluded because somehow for pure states, um, the relative entropy of entanglement and the squash entanglement coincide and the squash entanglement is uh, super additive. So there, okay, I'm not going into the detail, but there, uh, uh, I cannot, uh, I'm not interested actually in the point one, we, even though it's a more pop popular. So in some setting, you might interested, I might be interest, more interested in actually in, in other point, in other ranges uh, other than just um, one, so the relative entropy of entanglement. And here we use these additivity results to, to actually uh, find out that for in, cat in correlated catalytic transformation for a small error, uh, you need uh, a divergent catalyst with the amount of correlation. So it's logarithmic one over epsilon. Yes. So uh, last questions, uh, non-additivity of uh, entanglement monotone based on a quantum relative entropy. Okay, some okay. I mentioned some results are were, were already around, so it was already known that relative entropy entanglement is is not additive. The generalized robustness of entanglement is not additive, and um, many other results. But we kind of wanted to unify this under the same uh, under under a more general framework. So here we we can do it. So we have again a quantum relative entropy. And we define the, the monotone, related monotone just minimize over the set of separable states. And actually we find that any quantum, uh, any monotone defined in this way with any quantum relative entropy, then it's not gonna be additive. So here by quantum relative entropy, I mean something that satisfies data processing inequality. Uh, I guess any of you is well familiar with all these quantities. So it is not increasing with any quantum channel epsilon. 
uh, E uh, or E, or additive in under tensor product uh, or normalization condition. Uh, you can you can read them too. And um, so, for example, the relative entropy is satisfying these conditions. Uh, the alpha, all the alpha zero any relative entropy is two. Um, the geometric Rennie divergence, uh, but actually this is more general. And um, so we can find that for uh, anti-symmetric states, um, actually um, it is not additive. So the monotone evaluated on a tensor product of, the of, um, of two states is gonna be for, for um, dimension uh, big enough, equal to the monotone evaluated on a single state. And this is, different from two times the value so uh, of the monotone evaluated on a single state. So it means that it's not additive. And um, so, yeah, maybe some words, the way we do it is um, we can calculate with our expression for uh, all the alpha Z range uh, for uh, whenever this D is an alpha Z range relative entropy. And uh, when we have the points at zero, uh, so alpha equal to zero and z equal to one. So the mean um, mean uh, divergence and the d max, uh, so alpha equal to z equal to infinity, uh, we, can, we, we can calculate the quantity on these two points uh, for both the single state and the tensor product of two states. And what you can find is that it gives the same value. So basically we can sandwich all the quantities inside there. And so any divergence is gonna give the same value for uh, rho minus tensor rho minus and rho minus. And you can actually compare that uh, these two values are not one, the double of the other. So, uh, so it's not gonna be additive. And yeah, another remark is that the same holds for the, um, when the minimization is replaced over the set of PPD states. So also in this case, uh, these monotons wouldn't be additive. And um, so this, this is quite general. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah, I, I remark again that, yeah, for the additivity results, we needed a structure, even though it was quite a general structure, so for the alpha Z, uh, or for, yeah, I didn't mention it, but or also for the geometric um, divergences, uh, we could do it, yeah, for for both of them, but we couldn't identify, like, some some general properties, but but this actually holds for any, uh, the non-additivity results also for, holds for any um quantum relative entropy uh yeah okay i'm i'm done thanks yeah thanks a lot roberto for a nice talk so is there any question uh, okay so mark has a question you can number yourself and ask uh, yeah. okay um uh, thanks for your talk thanks um can you go to the slide with the relation between the maximum separable fidelity and the geometric measure? Yes. Yes. That one. Yeah. Hmm. The equality on the last line. Can you give a hint as to how that is shown? Uh, so uh, this is not my result. So is uh, this is uh, a paper. Um, where um, it's like a linking um, a distance measure with its convex roof. So I think it's shown to um, Ullmann's theorem, but I'm not proof. I'm really, I didn't really go through much the proof, but there you can show uh, a correspondence between uh, the convex roof construction and, and just the, the maximization of um, over the set of separable states. Yeah, you, uh, I You're think. Uh, I think it's from uh, Alexander Strasov and some other authors. Uh, it, it's it's a quite famous result. Uh, okay. Yeah. If you have the reference, um, yeah. Okay. To put it in the Zoom chat or Slack or whatever. Okay. Okay. I will send it to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I have a question. Hello. Yes. So could you back to the theory one and the theory three? Both. Yes. I, I, I think this time is already shown in my book. I, I think many, many uh, reference already noticed, I think, with this one. So I, I think what you are what you are talking about is 
um, these two references I, I have here. Not only this, uh, also my old book also discussed that uh, in the case of uh, in the case of uh, maximally correlated state, uh, so many things become uh, uh, additive. So, so uh, for what I could find, uh, uh, only also, only when only when both states are maximally correlated states, not just when one state is maximally correlated. Um, maybe I need to check, but uh, hmm. at least in the case of formation, uh, formation also satisfies additivity, and in that case, only one state should be a uh, maximum correlated. Uh, okay, you can you can send me the reference. Uh, oh, okay, and, okay also theorem three, theorem three. Yes, theorem uh, three is in the case of you consider in the case uh, of. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. This one? Yes. So of course, uh, my uh, my paper with Hong Jun, that journal physics A, uh, we only consider a sandwich Reni and this version. But I think we already discussed that equality. Yes. Uh, so so in, in the case of in the case of uh, uh, pet divergence and sandwich divergence, but uh, uh, the yes. general D is not discussed. I think. Okay, uh, so I'm quite familiar with the the um, the paper I the, the paper I cited. But yeah, if you have other references, so in that paper uh, you uh, you ask for uh, maximum correlated for for both row one and row two, and the way you can do it is quite different because there. Ah can... yes, at that time okay, okay, both, both maximum correlated. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. and there you can use the resource re resource for resource theory of coherence, which you can get from the um, conditional entropies. But in this case, without any constraints on row two, uh, uh, row two is uh, general. Okay, I can, I can row two know. is general. Uh, is is gonna be uh, a completely different proof, and mm -hmm. uh, and actually we were motivated. Uh, we didn't want to add any constraints on row two uh, because uh, we want to find some in some protocols, like in the catalytic setting, some assumption without uh, some some condition without requiring any assumption uh, on on the on the state row two. So that that was. Uh, was mainly my our motivation. Oh, for okay, okay. I understand. Assumption. Okay, okay. No worries. Uh, I see a message. Okay. Uh, if you have time for another question, uh, Mark, you yeah, can. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yes. Um, thanks. Can you go to the slide with the like integral representation function? Uh, that, that's one, one, but I think the other one was a bit simpler. Yes, for the relative and yes this one this one um so it's very interesting this finding um can you give a sense of how it's useful um because like there's the computational problem of the relative entropy of entanglement finding the tau and then You've shown, like, in some sense, there's this equivalence to equation 10. Um, um, or, 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 the, the, sorry, the condition before equation 9. Hmm. It seems like it's just as hard to check. And so... No, it's... It, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be... What's, what's it's, that? It's going to be much easier because uh, we have um, a maximization. Uh, it's a linear functional. So it's three it's sigma. Linear function. Okay, good. So just maximization of, of pure product states. So actually, you can it, it's it's gonna be much easier. You don't have the 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 convex combination. Um, uh, so if you're trying to find the tau, so you can okay, make, um, make some guess for it like an ansatz, and then check uh, this condition. So it, idea? it depends what you want to do. So also we have um, we can we can find the tau. So we have an ansatz, yes. But in the case of additivity, we don't actually need um, an answers. We just need the, the two a condition of the marginal problems without knowing tau. We just know that tau satisfies some conditions. Mm -hmm. And then we, we can prove uh, the additivity. But if you want to integrate the measure, uh, the, um, the quantity for a specific state, and we also did it, for example, for pure states, I showed, uh, I showed uh, the expression, this one uh, here. Uh, what you can do, you can guess the optimizer, tau, and then uh, you can check this minimi uh, this um, this uh, minimization problem. But now it's going to be easier because it's going to be just on few product states. 
And then you, if, if it actually, you can show it analytically that it holds, then you know that your optimizer is the true optimizer. And this is also quite, quite a strong method as I can, but it, yeah, uh, as, as I, th I think of it, uh, but yeah, for additivity, actually, you don't need to, to just uh, answer the, the explicit form of tau. Actually, for maximally equilibrium states, we don't know the optimizer, for example. We know some structure of it, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you don't really need for additivity uh, to, to know the optimizer. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's take other questions uh, to the Slack channel discussion. So let's thank uh, Roberto again. Thanks for a nice talk. Okay, thank you very much.